a forecast is a prediction of what will occur in the future. A forecast is basically a prediction of things that will happen in future. Now we forecast using previous knowledge or we forecast using historical data, past data, using past data to predict what will happen in future is basically what we refer to as forecasting. Now you realize that sports casters are able to predict the winners of football games. Sports casters are able to predict the winners of football games. You also realize that managers are able to forecast future demand of their product based on past demand. They're able to tell how a previous or how a future demand will be. Now, poor forecasting can result in poor inventory and then staffing decision. When we are not able to forecast properly, you realize that how much goods we will hold in our stores will have issues with that. And then how much staff would even be enough to cater for our future demands we would also have issues in that. And it may result in customer complaints because you realize that at the end of the day, we'll not be able to meet all the demands of the customers. Therefore, they will not be satisfied with us. Now, these are some of the forecasting techniques. You realize that we have judgment. People are able to sit and then judge. Now, we also have expert opinions. We have past experiences, which is the historical data or the past data. Expect opinions, you realize that they are individuals who have expertise in the field we are in. So they are able to sit, look at two things, and then tell exactly what will happen. Now, forecasting component. Let's look at the component of forecasting. A variety of forecasting methods are available. Now let's look at time frames. Time frames. We can have a short range, which is usually between one to two months time interval. We have medium range, which is between two to one or two year interval. Then we have the long range, which is more than one or two years. More than one or two years. Then also we have what we call patterns. We have what we call patterns. And then under the patterns, you realize that there are trends, there are seasonal patterns, there are cycles. And then also we have random variations or nuances. Now let's look at the patterns. Let's look at a seasonal pattern. Seasonal patterns are characterized by repeatable periods of ups and downs over a short period of time. They are characterized by repeatable periods of ups and downs over a short period of time. So you realize that in this data from May to September here, you realize that there were some downs here. Now, when you read from January, February, March, you realize that there were some ups here. So short periods within two to three months downs, two to three months up, two to three months downwards. We call that seasonal patterns, seasonal patterns. Now, cyclical patterns are regular patterns in a data series that take place over a long period of time. So when we have regular patterns over a long period of time, we term that as a cyclical pattern, cyclical pattern. So you realize that in this particular drawing, there were certain patterns, apps, downs, ups, downs, but it was over a long period of time. So we call them a cycle. So from one period to another becomes a cycle. One period to another becomes another cycle. Then the random variations. The random variations are the unexplained deviations of a time series from a predicted pattern. You realize that sometimes they give a forecast that it will rain in certain parts of the country. But at the end of the day, it rains in some part of the country and doesn't rain in other parts. The reason why it didn't rain in other parts was because of the random noises. So we are not able to get a 100% percent 
accurate result of whatever they have predicted. Now let's look at time series. Let's look at time series. It's a statistical technique that uses historical data to predict future to predict future behavior. It's a statistical technique that uses historical data to predict future behavior. So what happens is that we will usually have past data. And then once we look at the past data, we'll be able to predict how future demand or how future happenings will be. That's time series. Now regression, regression methods. Now you realize that regression deals with a causality, a causality. Now it's basically an attempt to develop a mathematical relationship between items that are being forecasted and then the factors that causes the way it behaves. So for example, we'll come up with a forecast. Now regression helps us to know which factors are driving the forecast. Lisa, just a second. With. Just a second. You have to unmute yourself again, please. Proceed. Proceed. Okay. Now, regression. The regression method here, it helps us to develop the relationship between what is being forecasted and then the factors that cause the behavior of what is being forecasted. Now, we also have other qualitative methods that we'll be looking at. Now, the qualitative methods basically use what we already looked at as the judgment, the expertise, and then the opinions of people to make forecast instead of using math to do that. Now, you realize that expertise in marketing and then engineering, what they do is that they are able to collect the data and then use the behavior of people to predict the future happiness. And they do that through the use of the Delphi method, through market research, and then through service. Now, statistical technique that makes use of historical data over a long period of time is what we basically refer to the time series method. That's what we've just explained. Forecast based on only one factor. And that factor here is time. So when we talk of time series, it's just a forecast that is based on only one factor. And the factor we are looking at here is time, is time. Now let's look at the first method, the first method. The first method is known as the moving average, the moving average, the moving average method, the moving average method. Now moving average uses values from the recent past to develop forecast, using values from the recent past to develop forecast. So we can use values from recent three months recent three months to be able to predict what will happen in april are we okay now let's look at the formula for that please put down this formula the moving average the moving average one divided by m summation di now the n is the number of periods in the moving average the di is the data in period i the data in period i the data in period i please put down this formula please put down this formula
Now let's quickly look at this example. Given the 10 month data on product order, for instance, paper clip, what is the forecast for November? What is the forecast for November? So we've been given past data on January, February, March, all up to October, and we are trying to predict the demand for November. Now, remember we said time series looks at historical data or past data to come up with a future demand. So we are basically going to look at this past data to come up with a demand for November. But to do that, we should know how many month moving average are we using? Whether we are using two months, whether we are using three months, whether we are using four months, whether we are using five months, whether we are using six months. So let's go to the questions and then see what the question is asking us to do, whether three months or four months or five months. Now, when you look here, we are being asked to calculate the three month moving average. Three month moving average, three month moving average, three month moving average. So what it means is that our N, our N from the formula, which is the number of moving periods or the number of periods is three. So take note, the N is three, the N is three. And then the summation of the DIs, the DIs here is basically looking at three month period, three month period. So we are summing up all of those three months you realize that if we are looking at three months period from November, three months from November or three months before November will be October, September, and then August. And the values for October is 90. The value for September is 110. The value for August is 130. So what it basically means is that we are adding these three values. So that is what we have here, 90 plus 110 plus 130, all divided by three. So if you are using a three month moving average, the order or the demand for November will be 110 orders. Now, if we are using a five month moving average, five month means five months past data from November. So what we'll do is that we count five months before November. So that will be October, September, August, July, and then June, these are the five months. So we are adding 50 plus 75 plus 130 plus 110 plus 90. And then we are dividing it by five because we said it was a five month moving average. So 90 plus 110 plus 130 plus 75 plus 50, all divided by five. That gives us 91 order or 91 others. So if we are to use a five month moving average, you realize that the demand for November would have been 91 days. Now they have done all of that. So let's pick the data again. January, others per month, we have all of them here. November wasn't given. Now, here, the question is now asking us to use a three month moving average to calculate all the forecast for the various months. Use a five month moving average, calculate all the others for the various months. How do we do that? How did we get this 103? Now you realize that to get this 103, because we're dealing with a three month moving average, three months, We'll start from January, February, and then March. So we are adding these three values. So it will be 120. Plus 90. Plus 100. All divided by three. That is what gives us this 103. That's what gives us this 103.3. Now, if you want to get this 88.3, you would also have to now come and count three months. So right now, January is not part. It starts from February. 
So one, two, three. So that would now be 90. 90 plus 100 plus 75 all divided by 3. And that gives us 88.3. Now, if we want to get this 95, what it means is that we would have to now come and count three months before the 95 or before the June. So that will be 100 plus 75 plus 110 all divided by three. Now, if we are interested in finding if we are interested in finding the five month moving average, what we'll do is that we have to add the first five months and divide by five. That gives us the forecast. So the first five months, the first five months. So you realize that within that first five months, we didn't have any forecast there because we were using those values. There was no forecast there. So basically we are going to add 120 plus 90 plus 100 plus 75. Plus 110, all divided by 5. And when we do that, we get 99. Then also to get this 85, what we'll do is that we count five months before the month of July. So that will now start from 90 plus 100. It starts from 90 all the way to 50 here. So that will be 90 plus 100 90 plus 100 plus 75 plus 110 plus 50, all divided by five. And when we do that, we'll get 80, 85. When we do that, we get 85. So that's what we did to get all of these values and then also get all of these values as well. Any question on what we've done so far? Now you can unmute yourself and let's discuss what we've done. The moving averages. Any question? Any question on what we've done so far? <laughs> 